My name is Emily Bolin with Sally Crew at Sally Beauty, and today I'm gonna to be adding a pop of color for Valentine's Day. The first tool we're gonna to be using today are the shears by Frome. These shears have high quality Japanese steel and are great for precision cutting, blunt cuts, and layers. The next item we're gonna use are the ultra seamless clip and hair extensions in metallic silver. The color we'll be using is by Good Die Young, semi-permanent hair color in Rock Lobster. And for this project, be sure to have a brush and bowl, clips, and a comb. To create this fun pop of color, I'm gonna be coloring extensions. Clip-in extensions are a great way to add volume and length. So I actually already have the majority of the wefts in my hair right now, just to give it more of that blended look. So I saved one of my smaller pieces from that extension box, and this is what I'm gonna be coloring today with the Rock Lobster, just to get a pop of color that's removable whenever I'm ready. So I'm gonna unbox this Good Dye Young hair color. This is a direct dye, so it doesn't need to be mixed with anything. It's perfect right out of the bottle. Good Dye Young's Rock Lobster is an extremely bright vivid, so I really wanted this super rich red so that my Valentine's Day color would pop. I'm going to begin by laying my extension weft flat onto the table, making sure that it's a little spread out so that every piece of hair is getting a bit of that color. High saturation is very important when making sure that you're coloring extensions. So I'm gonna put my hand right here on the top to hold that tension, and I'm gonna paint down in the direction of the hair. And I wanna get a little creative because I want there to be a good blend, because when I put this in my hair, the rest of my hair is this blonde color. So what I'm actually gonna do is leave out some of this top part so that I get a good blend, but then I can see that red really pop out. So going in a formation, I'm gonna start right here and go down. I'm kind of creating a V-shape. See how it's coming up higher on the edge of the extension? And I'm just gonna follow that formation like a V and just keep painting downward. And what's really helpful about having this red paper background. This is actually just wrapping paper, but if anything is left out, I'll be able to see it against the red paper. And going over a couple times is very important, and even going in horizontal sections down the hair. See how I'm going against the grain a little bit? That's to make sure that the hair's getting rolled a little bit and every piece is getting colored red on both sides and I'm using the corner of the brush to create more blends. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side of the extension. I'm gonna start here and start painting down and going in the direction of the hair. That way we're not getting very messy with our application. And by painting vertically, I kind of get more of a blend and I can blend out any horizontal striping I do. And I like to repetitively go over the same sections because saturation really is very important when coloring with vivids. And kind of rolling the hair, I can start to break it up and see where the color has not touched the hair yet and make sure that I'm saturating that. And I know I want a lot of red to show because I'm gonna to have to cut these extensions because my hair is a little bit shorter. So I wanna pull that red up a little bit higher so that I know once I cut them, I'm still getting a lot of red. And I just keep blending and painting out. And whenever I'm coloring with semi-permanents on an extension, I love to get a high level extension because that way the vivids are gonna show up. If we had a brunette extension, we're not gonna see the vivids on it. So we need to get hair that's already processed to a higher level. And 
And my favorite way to color extensions is to use a semi or demi permanent. So you can still tone extensions if you just want them a natural tone. Semi direct dyes are always gonna be easy because they sit right on the outside of the hair. I generally like to buy a lighter extension, especially if I need to tone down or add a little bit of a melted root. You can always take hair about two to three levels down with a semi or demi toner. You can lighten extensions. Um, I don't recommend it, but if you are, make sure you're not using anything higher than a 20 and very rarely you could use a 20. Hair extensions are already somewhat processed hair. So you have to remember that and they don't always take color as evenly or the way that you think they would on regular hair. So it's important to uh, make sure you're not trying to chemically alter the hair too far because you might not get the results you want, which is why it's a good idea to stick to those semi and demi formulas when coloring extensions. And blonde extensions just do so great with vivid hair color. And the thing I also love about direct colors are A, there's no mixing, uh, but B, they come out the way that they look, so you know what color you're getting. And you know, when we get the hair wet with the color, the color can look a little bit darker just because it's wet, but overall the tone's gonna remain the same. So when I feel like I've kind of rolled the hair, I've got the imprint that I'm looking for, I can pick up the hair and then turn it over. That way we know we're hitting every single hair that we wanna hit and we're not gonna have any patches or missing color. And I'm going in horizontally to roll the hair. High saturation. It's also important to remember that coloring your hair all the time, like with extensions or using volumes, uh, it can be a little more damaging just because these aren't connected to a scalp that produces moisture. Um, a lot of times we're not giving it as much conditioner as we would our own hair. So because there's not moisture reaching the hair all the time, that's why it's not a good idea to be chemically processing, the, processing them all of the time. So again, just sticking with those semis and demis are gonna keep your extensions looking shiny and nice and then you can actually get the colors you want out of them without damaging the hair. And the bolder the hair color you're applying, the longer it's going to last. If you don't wash your extensions, you're not gonna to see too much of a fade, it's more so heat can take out a lot of that color but because we're doing a really bright red for Valentine's Day, red is one of those colors uh, in the Vivid family that is very, very strong. So this should hang on for a while as long as we're not abusing the extensions. And a fun little tip I wanted to add for any new artists that maybe aren't as skilled in painting is that you can take your favorite conditioner. Right now, mine is the Ion Intense Moisture Conditioner. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in my bowl. And to get a really great blend on your red colors, you can use it as a blender. So you kind of start where the colors meet and I'll brush that into my red hair color. So if I'm ever worried about my blends or looking too harsh, it's gonna move around that red color just a little bit. It's also gonna condition my extensions. But it also acts as a barrier, so it's like I'm blurring the lines with a conditioner. And you kinda get this little middle tone with it. And you can do the conditioner before, you can do it after. Um, the hair color has not completely processed yet, so there's still time to kind of 
blend that in there and that way we don't end up with a blunt line between the blonde and the red. So I get that really good blend for when I put this in my hair but I still get the soft blend out to that bright red. And I highly recommend, if you're not somebody who colors hair all the time, to wear gloves. I've been doing this long enough to where I can paint hair without getting my hands all messy. But if you think you're going to create a mess, definitely wear gloves when doing this process because those vivid colors do stain. And a fun little trick I've also learned over time is that if you do get a color stain on your fingers, uh, if you take like acne pads, uh, like those little acne wipes that people use to uh, wipe their face with to get rid of acne, those seem to take vivid color out of my skin so easily. So that's a great backup to have if you do happen to stain your hands. And same thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my extension. And now I have the reverse side. I'm gonna take my conditioner and I'm just gonna paint over this blended area. And you don't have to do the conditioner. This is just for anybody who is kind of new at being an artist. They don't have like their painting down. This is kind of like a buffer just to make sure that it doesn't look like a straight line and we get pretty blends. So now that we're done coloring this extension, we're gonna wait for it to process for 30 minutes. Then we're gonna rinse it with cool water. And when we rinse with cool water, that's gonna ensure that the color stays in the hair. Cause anytime we use heat, that's gonna create the cuticle to sit up and it's gonna allow color to escape. So cooler water is definitely safer for vivid colors. So after we rinse this with cool water, we're gonna condition and then we're gonna dry. So we're not shampooing out this hair color. Most semi-permanent hair colors we do not shampoo out. So we let this extension process for 30 minutes. We rinsed and conditioned and blow dried. So this is it not heat styled. And this is our result. So you can see the V shape that is in the hair extension, how it goes up and down. And that way we get that great blend. And where we place the conditioner, we have more of a light red hue just to add more of that blend to it. So by the time we reach the bottom, it's that really, really bold red, which I love. So you can see how it's blended, it's painted on nicely, and this color is so vibrant. So I definitely recommend when you go to rinse it, make sure you're holding the hair vertically because if you hold it any other way, when that red, red hair color comes out with the wash, it's going to bleed over all of the blonde. So by holding it upright and making sure that you rinse the hair vertically, we're ensuring that the red is just gonna drop off into the bowl, the sink, wherever you are, and not touch any of the blonde. So the next step is to place the extension in my hair. So I'm gonna do something a little more asymmetrical. So it's gonna go on one side of my head I'm gonna choose my heavier side just so that it blends a little bit easier. So I'll begin by separating my hair. And I'm gonna use that duckbill clip to pin it up just to get it out of the way. And then I'm gonna take a comb and a great tip for having these extensions attached to your hair a little bit easier is to create a little bit of a tease so that the clips within the extension can have something to grab onto. So I'm gonna slide him right into the tees, clip, and then again. And I'm gonna pull this down just to make sure that this is blending the way that I want it to. And remember, this isn't styled yet, so it's gonna look like it doesn't belong with the rest of my hair. Styling is kind of the secret sauce to making the whole thing work. These are the results when using Good Dye Young's Rock Lobster. I love how vibrant the color is, and the best part is I put it on an extension, so whenever I'm ready to get rid of it, I can just unclip my extension, and then I have blonde hair again. To get more tips, tricks, and recommendations on coloring hair, visit my Instagram, Emily Bolin Hair, or visit DIY University at sallybeauty.com.